Okay, there we go. All right, so uh, last time at the end of the lecture, what we ended up uh, doing was um, thinking about the uh, change of coordinate formula for um, tangent uh, vector fields and tangent vectors. <clears throat> and then uh, we had an example uh, which showed that um, um, this thing with the uh, uh, grad F with the uh, components df by dx1, df by dxn um, is not a vector field. Okay, we did that just by showing that uh, it does not satisfy the um, change of basis formula that a vector field has to satisfy. Okay, so the question then was, what kind of thing is it? And it's the thing we're going to talk about right now. <clears throat> so we're going to have a sequence of definitions, which I'm going to give very hurriedly because they're quite similar to uh, constructions we've already seen. Um, um, so we talked about tangent vectors and um, tangent spaces and tangent bundles. And now what we're going to do is talk about cotangent vectors, cotangent spaces and cotangent bundles. <clears throat> okay, so let uh, M be a manifold. Okay, um, the cotangent space at uh, x in m is very simply um, the dual of the tangent space. Co is frequently a word um, that arises in mathematics in some sort of context of duality in some way. Um, um, and here it's just the, uh, the dual space of a vector space. Uh, and the notation we use for that is um, this. All right. <clears throat> and so, of course, you know, if that's the cotangent space, then a cotangent vector at x is simply an element of that vector space. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, the cotangent bundle <clears throat> just like the tangent bundle, it's just a collection of all the um, cotangent spaces. And it's denoted by that. Okay, now what did we do um, uh, when we talked about the tangent bundle? Well, what we did was we um, turned the tangent bundle into a manifold. And the way that we did that was uh, we showed that if, uh, if you have an atlas for M, that in, it, it induces a natural atlas for TM. Okay, um, and you know the, the dimension of the tangent bundle was twice the dimension of the manifold. Um, now you can do the same thing um, for the cotangent space, and we're not quite going to do that. We're going to uh, essentially do that. And oh, sorry about this, my um, my iPad for some reason feels like it wants to go to sleep whenever I have it plugged into charge. So um, I'm just going to have to remember to tap it every now and then. <clears throat> okay, um, uh, so we're not quite going to go through and laboriously give uh, uh, the construction of what you would call cotangent bundle charts, um, but essentially we're going to do that because remember, you know, the last lecture we basically uh, showed um, that the change of coordinate formula for uh, vector fields and for basis vector fields essentially carries bundled within it um, the, uh, the overlap conditions for the tangent bundle charts. And so really uh, what we talked about last time <clears throat> really already has 
<clears throat> excuse me, uh, uh, the um, manifold structure for the tangent bundle kind of built into that. And so what we're going to do with the cotangent bundle is we're just going to kind of jump directly to um, the change of coordinate formula for um, uh, things that are cotangent. Okay. Um, uh, and you know, inside that will be basically the uh, manifold structure of the cotangent bundle. Although I'm not going to sort of spell that out explicitly. Okay, so um, <clears throat> so let me just uh, 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 introduce um, um, the notation that we're going to use. And so recall uh, um, um, the when we talked about linear algebra. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Okay, so we had, a, if you had a basis for the vector space, uh, that in, uh, which I wrote as E1 up to uh, EN like so, um, that induced uh, a dual basis for the dual of, of the vector space V. Now, um, Similarly, we had uh, a basis for the tangent space, which was these um, uh, collection of tangent vectors, which we use this funny partial derivative notation for. And there's a basis for uh, the cotangent space as well. And it has its own special notation. Okay, um, and it's not that you kind of, um, you know, here you just take these and you write them as a superscript. You don't just take these and write them as a subscript. You have a separate notation and the notation is uh, this. Okay, all right. So, um, so in other words, this, is just the dual basis uh, to uh, um, to this, okay? Um, okay. All right, um, uh, so, so again, this is just notation and I'm just asking you to just absorb uh, the, the kind of weird notation. And um, so you know, um, two things happen. First, you use it and you just, you just get used to it. Um, and uh, as, time goes, <clears throat> as time goes by, we'll see that there's kind of some rationale for this kind of funny, funny notation. And it makes, makes things kind of easier to, um, to remember. And so um, in particular, uh, the change of coordinates formula is, um, you know, you could guess it from the notation that's used here, as, as we'll see um, right now. Um, so first, actually, let me uh, <clears throat> um, uh, so we had vector fields that we talked about last time. Now we're going to talk about co-vector fields. All right, and so of course it won't surprise you <clears throat> to learn that a covector field, just like a, a, a vector field assigns a, a cotangent, uh, sorry, a, a vector field assigns a tangent vector to every point, a covector field assigns a cotangent vector uh, to every point. And so it has the very same, no, uh, very same kind of definition. So a uh, covector field. on M is a mapping. Alpha from M to the cotangent bundle, such that. So a vector field assigns a tangent vector, at, uh, assigns to the point X, a tangent vector at X. This assigns to the point X, a cotangent vector at X. So in other words, alpha of X is in the cotangent space. <clears throat> okay, um, and so uh, covector fields 
can be of class CR. <clears throat> Just like vector fields are. After all, they are <clears throat> just mappings uh, between manifolds. Okay, so I haven't really told you what the manifold structure here is, but again, we're going to see that when we talk about uh, um, um, the change of coordinates formula for for covector fields. Okay. Oh, sorry, Professor. Yes, please. Sorry to interrupt. Um, yeah. Is the alpha x in the code? Oh, tangent? yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That's a typo. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> um, okay, uh, so uh, so we have if we take a chart, a U phi with coordinate functions x one up to xn, then we have covector fields dx1 up to dxn on u, okay, because they're only defined on the, uh, the domain of the uh, coordinate chart, um, and they're defined by um, and so then I'm going to write down a stupid looking formula, um, um, uh, just like I did with vector fields. So it's dxj of x is equal to dxj of x. Okay. And so um, again, the reason that the formula looks stupid is because I just you know made notation that made everything um, work out properly. So over here, um, I'm using uh, this definition of a basis. Okay, so um, uh, over on this side, I'm saying that these are the dual basis for the cotangent space at X. And this is the covector field DXJ evaluated at X. Okay, and again, you know, because I um, chose notation for things that make sense, and the formula looks like a topology. <clears throat> um, okay, all right, so now if alpha is a covector field, then we can write Okay, so alpha, um, so at every point X, um, so I have this coordinate chart uh, U, so at every point X and U, alpha of X is gonna be in the cotangent space. And so therefore it will be uh, a linear combination of these uh, cotangent vectors, just like for, uh, for vector fields, okay? And so alpha of X is going to be alpha uh, J of X, D X J of X, and this is gonna be valid for every X in U, or briefly, alpha is alpha j dx j. Okay, so for vector fields, we wrote x is equal to xj e by d x j. Okay, it's the same kind of expression. It's just taking a, a covector field and writing it as a linear combination of uh, uh, of these basis covector fields, right? <clears throat> so fun exercise. And I suggest you do it. Okay, is that uh, alpha of x? All right. So remember, remember. Let's let's try to make sure that we make sense of this. Um, so, what kind of an object is alpha of x? Okay. So x is a vector field. So at every point x in um, uh, in u, because we're just working on the domain of a coordinate chart here, um, uh, this will give us a give me a tangent vector at x, and similarly, this will give me a cotangent vector at x. And so when I write this, what I mean is, um, I really mean this is 
alpha of x, okay, and so maybe let me write this for the moment with an argument there of x, just to make, make uh, sure I, it's, it's, it's clear what, I, what I'm doing. Okay, <clears throat> so what kind of an object is that? That's a question that I would like an answer to. In what space does that thing live? Or equivalently, in what space does that thing live? Okay, so this is in the coat, sorry, the tangent space at X. This is in the cotangent space at X. Okay, and so what will, where will, what will this be? Number. That's right. So alpha is a linear function on the tangent space. And so <clears throat> when I evaluate alpha on a tangent vector, it's going to just give me a number. Okay. And so this thing is going to be a number. Um, <clears throat> And you can you can just we sort through all the definitions, and you can uh, verify that this is uh, alpha j of x, x j of x. Okay, so just you know write alpha like that, write x like that, and then just do the um, <clears throat> um, do the simple linear algebra. Okay. All right. Um, and so what you see is that, you know, it, it, this is just like we saw in linear algebra, this kind of, you know, if you are a little bit careless, you might want to say that that looks like an inner product of some sort, right, because I have two vectors with com one has components alpha, the other has components x, and I'm, you know, just taking the sum of the products of the um, components. Um, but, you know, we know now that that's not an inner product uh, <clears throat> because um, inner products require vectors from the same vector space and these are not. These are components of a cotangent vector and these are components of a tangent vector. Okay. Um, um, so alternative notation that we will use here. And the alternative notation is designed to uh, not write that cumbersome thing all that often. Okay, so we'll write uh, alpha semicolon x like that. Okay, so uh, you know the the semicolon as opposed to the uh, a, a comma is important, and you know uh, uh, I usually write uh, inner products with commas. Okay, so this is a semicolon, and and so this um, uh, this symbol uh, requires no additional structure on my vector space. So it's just a vector space, and it's dual. Okay, so there's no inner product going on there. Okay. Um, so uh, let's go back to, uh, or sorry, before we do that, let's talk about the change of coordinate formula. For covector fields. Because again, this is essentially um, where the a manifold structure for the cotangent normal comes from. Because really what we're going to be doing here is we're really writing down the overlap conditions for you know natural charts for the cotangent bubble. Okay. <clears throat> um, so you know we talked at length in linear algebra about the change of coordinate formula, the change of well we in linear algebra it's the change of basis formula. And you know the same kind of thing uh, uh, happens for um, um, tangent spaces as happens for vector spaces. So I am just going to write down um, uh, what the change of coordinate formulas are, okay? Um, and remember that the change of coordinate formula, okay, so I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna take uh, coordinates, two coordinate sets of coordinates, uh, x1 up to xn, and x tilde one up to x tilde n, Okay, and so again, there's charts underlying these things. There's a u phi and a u tilde, phi tilde, okay, but I, sometimes I'll suppress writing those, writing those things out, okay? Uh, so these are just gonna be coordinates. 
Okay, and whenever I am writing change of coordinates formulas, I'm just implicitly assuming that the charts corresponding to these things intersect. Okay, or also I'm talking about nothing. Okay. Um, okay, so then um, I can write alpha. If alpha is a covector field, I can write alpha in two different ways, right? I can write it as um, in the untilted coordinates. And as I saw above, it looks like that. And I can also write it in the tilted coordinates. Okay, and just like for vector fields, okay, so for vector fields, What we talked about last time was the form was relating uh, these two representations of the same vector field, right? And so we had formulae that related x tilde j to xj, uh, and we had formulae that related d by dx tilde j to d by dxj. Okay, so we're going to do exactly the same thing here. And like I said, I'm just going to kind of write down the um, write down the answer because it is just basic linear algebra. Okay. Um, and so alpha tilde j, okay, and there's a um, um, uh, there's some mnemonics here for for all of these things that I'm going to talk about. Uh, I'm going to kind of summarize all of these change of coordinate formulae and talk about uh, mnemonics for remembering them. And that's kind of where this notation, um, uh, funny notation for the basis vectors, will be helpful. But let's just kind of write this thing down right now, okay? Um, and so I'm going to express uh, alpha tilde. Um, as a function of the alphas, okay, so the components in the tilted coordinate system as functions of the uh, components in the untilted coordinate system, okay, and I know <clears throat> um, that I'm going to have some Jacobian matrix out front here, right, um, and the question is, where does everything go? Um, well, uh, uh, the way this works is, um, Right, uh, I have to sort of I sort. Yeah, that was me going through the mnemonic in my head <laughs> to to remember how uh, how this goes. So I'll, I'll be sharing that mnemonic with you in a few seconds. Okay, but it goes like uh, 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 like this. So the tilde goes on the bottom, and that's there's two choices here to make. One is where the tilde goes, and the other is where the indices go. And in, the indices are are are, are fixed by. Uh, um, the J here and the K here, right? So the J is a subscript here. And so on this side, the J has to be a subscript, which means it has to go there, um, which means the K has to go there, okay? All right, so that's the component uh, change of basis formula or change of coordinate formula. Um, and then for the, okay? For the um, basis vector, the basis covector fields, well, this one um, is uh, the mnemonic falls out just more or less easily from kind of, you know, infinitesimal, you know, I, I mean, there, there's an interesting thing that's happening here. You, you may well have been physics or some of your, or, or if you've taken some engineering courses where you've talked about, you know, infinitesimals somehow, you know, Ds are frequently used for that. Um, um, but, but these are not precise, or sorry, vague infinitesimals. These are, you know, um, basis uh, covector fields. Okay, so they have a very uh, um, um, specific uh, defin and, and clear mathematical definition. Um, but they behave very much like the infinitesimals that you, you know, might use in physics. Um, and in particular, if you were to, you know, in physics, think of an expression like this, and x tilde is a function of x, and, you know, how does the infinitesimal dx tilde uh, vary um, as you vary the infinitesimal for x? Well, you know, you kind of do a chain rule there, right? And your chain rule would look like this. Okay, so I imagine you've seen formulas like this uh, coming from various places. Okay, and so another fine exercise, and again, it's just using the uh, change of uh, um, the change of coordinate formulas and the uh, summation convention.
is sorry. I will frequently do that. Okay. So if you just apply these definitions, okay, and you can show that that formula holds. Okay, and again, um, it's a very simple exercise in the summation convention, and therefore I suggest that you do it. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so let's, uh, uh, let me sort of summarize the uh, um, change of basis formulas or change of coordinates formulas. Okay, so for vector fields, um, we have uh, um, x tilde j is d x tilde j by d x k x k. Um, and then we have the corresponding change of uh, change of coordinates for the basis. Okay, so it's, it's d by d x tilde j is d x k by d x tilde um, j d by d x k. All right, and then for um, um, co-vector field components, we have alpha tilde j is uh, d x. Um, and so uh, when I have these written down here, I can easily see the one uh, the component uh, change of coordinates formula has the tilde in the opposite place as the vector field. So it's going to be. Um, like that. Okay, and then the basis. Okay, so those are the um, the four basic change of coordinates formulae, and and like I said, there's two ways to think about about these. One is just that these just you know kind of tell you how uh, vector fields and covector fields change coordinates. Okay, so it tells you that. But as I described in some detail for vector fields, and I'm going to just infer the same thing for covector fields, um, these change of change of coordinate formula actually encode the manifold structure here for the tangent bundle and here for the cotangent bundle, okay? Because it's really the overlap conditions, okay? So there's some mnemonics. Okay, um, so let's start with uh, this one, okay? Um, well, the mnemonic here is that uh, uh, the components of vector fields are tangent vectors. And, you know, our very definition of a tangent vector was that it was a velocity to a curve. Um, and so uh, um, uh, you, can, you can write uh, D. So think of um, X tilde as being uh, the tangent vector to a curve, okay? So I have a curve um, um, in coordinates, which is a function of T, and I can differentiate it. So that'll be dx tilde j by dt uh, is equal to, okay? And I'm gonna just write this, um, okay? Um, and you just use the chain rule, right? So if you're taking uh, x tilde, which is a function of x, which is a function of t, and you apply the chain rule, the chain rule looks like this. Okay? Um, which is exactly this formula. Um, and so, you know, you uh, uh, kind of, um, you know, just after you write down the mnemonic for using the chain rule, then you can just replace that with x tilde j, and you can replace that with uh, x um, k. All right. All right. Um, so that's the mnemonic for, um, uh, so let me call these one, two, three, and four. Okay, so this is the mnemonic for one. Um, 
uh, the mnemonic for two is is obvious okay um and 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 that is this just really really just looks immediately like the chain rule right if you were to just stick a function in there then this would just be the derivative of the function f with respect to x tilde where the dependency on x tilde comes from the fact that x is a function of x tilde okay and so the mnemonic here is just uh, again all these mnemonics amount to the chain rule Okay, so uh, you just write down that that true statement from, um, by the chain rule, um, and then you just uh, um, um, erase the f. Okay, and then that's your uh, um, change of basis formula for the basis of vector fields. Okay. All right, and what about the third one? Oops. Okay. All right, so the third one um, is the mnemonic that you use is actually exactly the same um, um, mnemonic that I just used here. Okay, and what you do is you think of the out here, remember we thought of as the X capital X's as being velocities. Here we're going to think of the alphas as being derivatives of a function. Okay, so we have uh, uh, DF by DX tilde j is dxk by dx tilde j df by dxk. All right, so like I said, it's the same thing as in the previous, uh, uh, except remember, these are these are different. Um, they look the same, but they're different. These are for the basis vector fields, and these are for the components of a co-vector field. Okay, so they're, they look the same, but they're giving you different information. And the idea is if you just replace this with alpha tilde j and this with alpha k, um, then you get uh, that formula, okay? And then finally, um, the, the, the um, whoops. Um, Rather like uh, uh, the second one is its own mnemonic, uh, so is the fourth one. Okay, and all, again, all of these are just chain rule. So these are things that you never have to commit to memory. You can quickly um, jot them down. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so those are the change of basis formulae, and these also um, this also explains the notation. Okay, um, um, this is being a basis for a tangent space, and this is being the dual basis for the cotangent space. Okay, so so the, the mnemonic sort of il illustrate um, that the whole thing is is uh, uh, the notation is super tight. Everything works uh, quite perfectly. So although the notation is funny looking. Um, um, and if you're overly naive about it, it can lead you to simplifying things or misinterpreting things. Um, um, but but that's something you just have to work to try not to do. Okay. All right. Um, so finally, um, <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me again. Um, so finally, what the, the what these mnemonics actually demonstrate for you, and we've seen it show up here in two different places. Um, this is actually the one that 
uh, is um, most relevant to us. This does immediately tell us that this thing that we talked about last time with components being df by dx1, df by dx2, and so on, um, that that wasn't a vector field, but it is a covector field. So there is a well-defined, okay, and it's well-defined just by three, uh, anything, three um, co-vector field, df, and I, that's, that's, that's the notation that I'm using for it, um, uh, associated, to a smooth function f um, by requiring that in coordinates d df is df by dxj dxj, okay? All right, and so what we did last time was we, we verified this. We, we, what, we said, what we showed last time was that this doesn't make sense, okay? And then there was, as, as we said last time, there's lots of ways that doesn't make sense. One is the chain, the um, summation rule is violated, where here it's perfectly fine. Okay. Um, so this is the differential. Of F, okay. So that thing from vector calculus with components uh, 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 being the partial derivatives, um, um, that's actually not a vector field, although you called it the gradient vector field. And there is actually a way to um, um, turn that into a vector field, um, um, but it requires additional structure. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that, actually. Um, uh, but in a natural ge differential geometric setting, uh, this thing that you call the gradient vector field is not a vector field at all. It's a, a co-vector field. All right, so, so what you see here is that this is you know, basically like the derivative of f, right? Okay, um, so is there a way to uh, define um, a derivative of an arbitrary mapping between manifolds, not just a function um, from a manifold into the scalars? Okay. Oops. So let's think, so we know what it means for a function to be differentiable, right? Uh, sorry, a mapping between manifolds to be differentiable. We talked about that. So it means that uh, 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 the local representatives are differentiable in the classical vector calculus sense, um, but we never actually talked about what the derivative is. So let's, let's do that. Okay, so it has a um, slick definition, um, and it has a slick definition just because of the uh, way we defined um, the tangent bundle and specifically tangent vectors. So, um, So if we have smooth manifolds M and N and a smooth mapping <clears throat> F from M to N, the tangent 
map for f is, okay, so first of all, we write it as tf, and it's a mapping from tm to tn. Okay, and what does it do? <clears throat> well, um, Every point in TM is a tangent vector to some point, um, which means that it's an equivalence class of curves. And so I'm going to write points in the tangent bundle of M um, as what they are, which is equivalence classes of curves. Um, and so then uh, this is going to map to um, an equivalence class of curves, because that's what points in TN are. And the equivalence class of curves is uh, uh, this one. Okay, so that's the definition. So we'll sort out what that definition um, means. Um, uh, but uh, uh, maybe there's a picture we can draw here. Okay. Um, All right, so I have a uh, um, a curve gamma, which passes through this point here, and it has a tangent vector, which is uh, like this. Okay, so this is the point x. Um, and so now, if I take this curve uh, and I just compose it with f. I get a curve um, in N now, right? So it's just the image of the curve gamma under the mapping um, F. Um, and so that curve is gonna be whatever it is. Okay, so this is the point F of X. That thing right there is going to be the equivalence class of um, uh, F composed of the gamma at F of x, okay, and by definition, uh, that's what I call um, TF applied to that thing, okay. All right, let's see what this thing really looks like, okay, and how do you see what something really looks like in geometry? Uh, well, at least in the beginning, um, when you're maybe not super comfortable with things, uh, a good way to do that is to represent what things look like in coordinates, okay. So let u phi will be a chart, oops, a chart for m and the psi, <clears throat> the chart for m, and we're going to assume that x is in u and um, f of u is contained in v. Okay, so this is the definition, this is the requirement that I, uh, this, is what ha this is what has to be true for me to actually write down the local representative of, of f. Okay, so let gamma be uh, a curve at x. Okay, and so I can take its equivalence class to at x to define a tangent vector at x. Okay, um, so now let's write down local representatives for everything. Um, oh, so sorry, uh, I need to say this. Um, I'm going to use coordinates x1 through xn for uh, u and y1 up through ym for v, okay? Okay, so uh, the local representative of gamma, okay? So gamma uh, is gonna be a curve in M. And so in my chart, the curve is gonna be represented by representing the coordinate functions uh, as functions of time, okay? So locally gamma is, is gonna look like this. Okay, uh, the local representative of F uh, is gonna um, be, uh, it's gonna take the coordinates, a point in M, 
uh, the coordinates x1 through xn, um, and it's going to map it to um, y1 of x1 through xn and ym of x1 through xn. Uh, okay, and this is really the local representative f phi psi of x1 through xn. Okay. All right, and then um, okay, the tangent vector. Okay, uh, so I know that this curve gamma is a curve at x, so that means it passes through the point x at time zero. Uh, the components of this tangent vector are just going to be the derivatives of this thing uh, with respect to t at t equals zero. So it's going to be x dot one at zero, x dot n at zero. Okay, and then the components of f composed with gamma at x. Okay, so this is the thing I'm actually interested in. Um, well, what's that going to be? This is going to be obtained by, okay, so this is going to be uh, y dot one uh, at zero, y dot m at zero, but to calculate these time derivatives, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick x as a function of t in every slot here, uh, and then I'm going to use the chain rule, of course. Okay, uh, and so uh, this is going to be, okay, so by the chain rule, so so much of differential geometry just amounts to the chain rule, or at least elementary differential geometry. Okay, by the chain rule, I have um, whoops, uh, y dot a at zero is going to be dy uh, a by dxj at um, <clears throat> x1 at zero, xn at zero. Okay, so this is going to be the Jacobian matrix, right? So this is a, an um, M by N matrix, um, and I'm going to multiply that by, uh, uh, by the vector X dot J at zero, okay? So that's just the chain rule, okay? So the point is this. Is that the local representative of t f is okay so it's t f t phi t psi okay so right um so if the local representative of f is f phi psi then the local representative of t f is going to be that okay and this is going to take uh, a vector in uh, the coordinates for a vector in tm which are going to be x and again i'll put the bars underneath here to emphasize that these are vectors in rn okay uh, so this is going to be um f phi psi of x and then the derivative d f phi psi of x acting on d i'm oh, sorry Okay, right, because that, that's, what, that's what this formula is, right? So this is just, right, so if uh, uh, the y's as function of x are just giving me the local representative, then the derivatives of y with respect to the derivatives of x are giving me the Jacobian of the local representative, okay? And so this is, and so this is really just the derivative, okay? So one can... think of T F as being the derivative of F. Okay. Um, so different people use different notation for T F. Okay. 
and every other piece of notation for TF that isn't TF is bad notation. And the reason it's bad notation is that formula right there, right? Isn't that nice? If F goes from M to N, then TF goes from TM to TN. But people persist in using notation which doesn't look like that. And I uh, attribute that to uh, some kind of mental illness. Some people will write it as DF. Some people will write it as F lower star, just an atrocious notation. Um, um, and so I will send you out into the world uh, uh, to proselytize using this notation for uh, the derivative of a mapping between manifolds. OK, so I, I went quickly through that uh, 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 last bit because I was kind of running out of time. So, But please look over uh, this carefully if you didn't understand it. Everything here is super simple, right? This is all just chain rule, OK? All right, um, I will stop the recording.